Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and what we're going to be doing in this video is actually opening supply drops. Now this isn't going to be a live supply drop opening video, I recorded this but I didn't record it live or my live reactions to it or anything like that. I'm just going to be opening up these supply drops and as you guys can see I get very lucky on the first supply drop that I opened today and ended up getting the MVP baseball bat which I made a video about earlier on today and uh, it's a very fun melee weapon, it really is. But what we're going to be talking about today is just further beating the dead horse that is supply drops here in Black Ops 3. There's a lot of people that are very upset, I suppose, about the idea that they're actually adding in even more weapons into Black Ops 3 supply drop loophole. People are wondering if Treyarch's ever going to stop this, if there's anything we can do to change it. And at the end of the day, guys, I don't think there is anything we can really change about the current system. I just don't. It's just one of those things where I feel as though they're going to continue to do it because they're continuing to be successful at it and it's going to make them a lot of money. There's really no reason for them to stop besides a small percentage of the community giving them a lot of backlash and a lot of negative feedback about the idea because as uh, what we discussed in earlier videos talking about this I really feel as though the vast majority of the Call of Duty fan base doesn't care that there are weapons and supply drops. I just think a very small section, the section that's here on YouTube which is the over-enthused community which I think a lot of people can agree. We are definitely over-enthused when it comes to Call of Duty. We are just people that are always talking about different weapon subs and different weapon combinations. We're discussing perks and uh, how we like games and whether or not the game's lighting was good and whether or not the score streaks are adequate and what's the best way to run your score streaks, what's the best way to level up the best way to unlock dark matter and these we are the enthused consumer right but the vast majority of fans aren't they're very casual consumers and the very casual consumer doesn't seem to care too much about the idea of weapons being locked behind a slot machine paywall now today they add in five new weapons these weapons are going to be the hg40 submachine gun which is an mp40 it's the mp40 returning again it returned last year in advanced warfare but it's returning again to a treyarch game which is notorious if you guys don't know and i don't blame a lot of you because it was a very long time ago in 2008 when World at War came out, there was a broken gun in that game. Most Call of Duty's have had that, right? Most Call of Duty's have had a weapon that was a little bit stronger than the rest, a little bit better in some respects, and a lot of people tend to use it. It was like the most overused gun in that game. The MP40 was a bit different. It was a ridiculously powerful submachine gun. So powerful so that it was ran by just about everybody. It was really a plague on that game. Anybody that played World at War back in the day, and even today if you go back and try and play it, when you die to an MP40, you'll know there's nothing you could do to that. It was such a powerful submachine gun that you didn't need to use stopping power. What is stopping power? I'm sure some of you guys are asking. Well, back in the older Call of Duties, there was two main second tier perks that everybody would use. Either stopping power or juggernaut. Stopping power made it so your weapons did more damage. Juggernaut made it so you had more health, right? And basically, people would try to pick between those two if they were playing any standard playlist. They got removed after Modern Warfare 2 because they were essentially mandatory perks if you weren't playing hardcore, and that's not fun, right? You basically had to pick between the two. Actually, I think they removed Juggernaut after World at War, so Modern Warfare 2 had stopping power, but then again, that was like a mandatory perk in Modern Warfare 2 even, so eventually they just got rid of both perks completely because they were too good, right? They essentially took up the uh, the perk 2 slot and everybody had to use them. In World at War, everybody used stopping power. It was so powerful that it was nearly required on just about every weapon with the exception of shotguns, because it didn't really benefit them too much, and the MP40. The MP40 was so good, it felt as though it had stopping power already built into it so people would use juggernaut on it that way they could essentially have stopping power and juggernaut so they had this weapon that essentially had both perks which made it ridiculously powerful it was so good i still have nightmares about the sound of a dual mag 64 round mp40 never aiming down sights why don't they ever aim down sights i don't understand they always just hit fire with it it's ah uh, the MP40 was so good, guys. It was so powerful, so broken, and I hated it because I've always been one of those people that tries to detest the broken guns, the OP guns in Call of Duty. I think that's evident last year with Advanced Warfare with how much I complained about the ball in the ASM1. But still, I digress. It was one of those broken weapons, and they're actually making a comeback in Call of Duty for the first time in a Treyarch game since it was broken back in World at War. So that sounds really interesting, but it's really unfortunate that it's locked behind a slot machine. It's really unfortunate that it's locked behind this paywall. They also have a brand new sniper rifle, the Interdiction Sniper, which actually looks like a really cool weapon, but I can't use it. I, I don't have access to it, nor am I really much of a sniper anyways. So I'm okay, really, with not having it, but at the same time, it's like it's still a new weapon that I don't have access access to. And I understand the backlash. I understand why we as the enthused Call of Duty fan base, why we're upset about it. Because it feels like kind of a slap in the face. You know, I've been playing this series for about 10 years now. I've purchased every single piece of DLC. I've purchased every single game multiple times 
because you know whatever you know your disc ends up getting scratched or you know, lose it or ends up uh, you know end up borrowing you're giving it to a friend or you end up something right I think I've bought in every Call of Duty game at least twice at this point right plus all of the DLC I've bought in at least once I've purchased all of the cosmetic personalization DLC I'm just I'm a super fan when it comes to Call of Duty my livelihood is based on Call of Duty here with my YouTube channel even and to be able to make it so like even someone like me who has really invested a lot of time a lot of money and just everything into the Call of Duty franchise to even make it so someone like I can't even have access to it because it's all just complete RNG it does feel like a bit of a slap in the face at the end of the day but again it is completely RNG it is complete up to whether or not we're going to get lucky enough to actually acquire these things via supply drops can we be mad about that yeah, I guess I, I guess we can. We can be upset about the fact that, yeah, we don't have access to these weapons. That's certainly understandable. But can we get mad about people spending money on supply drops? No, because that's their choice. They're usually consenting adults, depending on uh, what age you are, I suppose. But when you purchase supply drops, you cannot be upset about the fact that you may not actually get the thing you want because you know what you're doing. You're pulling the lever on a slot machine, essentially, right? So you can't get too upset about that. I'm in a weird situation where I'm a YouTuber, and again, like I just discussed, my livelihood kind of depends on Call of Duty and the content that I can make out of it. And so it's a bit annoying that someone like me, who is once again dependent on making videos for Call of Duty, I can't make videos of the new weapons if I don't have access to them. So that's definitely a bit frustrating. I saw a lot of people like, oh no, you spent $300 on the last supply drops when the, when the last weapons came out, like the NX Grand, the... Marshall 16 in the Shadow Claw. Uh, I spent $300 on supply drops in total at that time. Everyone's like, how could you do that? It was a waste of money. It's like, guys, YouTuber, business, Nero Cinema, hi, this is what I do. It's perfectly fine. Trust me, I'm going to be okay. You know, it's, it's just, it's a weird situation. It really is. There's a situation where you have a lot of people opening supply drops and they're okay with it. There's a lot of people who aren't opening supply drops and they hate everyone that is opening supply drops. There are people who are opening supply drops and they hate themselves for it. It's a really odd situation. It really is. But at the end of the day, guys, I think we've all kicked this horse enough. It's dead. Just leave it be. It's not going to be coming back to life. It is a dead horse at this point. They are going to continue to add weapons to supply drops. That's the very nature of it. They're going to continue to do it. There is a very popular Reddit post, which is becoming even more popular now that the MP40 has actually been released because it kind of predicted that from somebody who claimed to be a friend or an employee or someone close to Treyarch. And he basically laid it out as Treyarch did not want to initially have supply drop weapons in the game, right? They did not want to have supply drops really at all, but they saw the success that they had with Advanced Warfare. Activision said, yes, put some sort of microtransaction in your game. And apparently, according to this guy, which who knows if it's true, if you guys want to read the Reddit post, there's going to be a link to it down there in the video description. But according to this guy, who once again, may or may not actually be someone close to Treyarch, he says that Treyarch kind of worked to make it so it's cosmetic only. And then Activision realized they weren't making any money, right? After a while, they realized that the Advanced Warfare supply Drops, they made like five times as much money as compared to the Black Ops 3 supply drops and they forced them to make a change because they know people aren't going to buy supply drops unless there's actual game changing content in there in the form of actual weapons and ever since then they've been making their money back and so on and so forth and now Activision is essentially breathing down Treyarch's neck to put in more weapons and possibly up to two specialists in supply drops that's what this guy is saying once again could be complete uh, rumor could just be complete hearsay you don't know if this is actually accurate or not but he did predict the MP40 in that post that's something to keep in mind so who knows? If that guy's right, then there's going to be more weapons coming to Black Ops 3 in the future. And I don't, I, I fully anticipate it. I fully anticipate there's going to be more weapons than just what we saw today. I think in a month or two, we're going to get a couple more weapons thrown in there, along with a bunch of other melee weapons. It's going to be something we're going to be seeing in the future for Black Ops 3. That is their business model. Uh, people have talked in the past about the idea that why don't we have uh, DLC camos and stuff like that, or DLC weapons, like actual proper DLC weapons in the game. And that's because they're making enough money from supply drops. You know, that's their business model this year. They're not going to be doing personalization DLC packs. We did have one, the Code Warriors one, but that was for veterans and whatnot. It was essentially a charitable thing. So they, did, they made a pass on that, I suppose. But the rest of them, I think, are just going to be put in supply drops, new camos, new specialist gear, new weapons and stuff like that. That because at the end of the day, they're making a lot more money off of RNG and the you know the slot machine. That's what we're doing. We're all pulling the lever on the slot machine as compared to direct purchase DLC. You know, I spent what I spent today. I think I spent a hundred dollars on supply drops. I bought like the biggest bundle that you could, and I got two weapons out of it, and I made two videos out of it. I made the video out of the MVP baseball bat and the carver knife. Those are two new weapons that I got 
out of this supply drop opening, which was once again $100 worth of supply drops, I got two weapons. Now, imagine if I could actually purchase these directly. Imagine if I could purchase the HG40 SMG or the RSA Interdiction Sniper individually for $5, or if I could purchase any of these melee weapons for $5 each. Let's say hypothetically these melee weapons are worth $5 each, which they're not because they're just melee reskins, but let's say I bought all of these for $5 each. That's $25. As compared to the $100 I spent today, which only got me two of them. You know, if this were actually a fair business model, even that's not so fair, I could have gotten all five of these for $25. But instead, I spent $100 and I only got two of them. And neither one I really wanted because I wanted the actual weapons compared to the melee skin. So can you see why they're making a lot more money this way? You know, they are. And then there's always a person on their high horse like, why just spend $100 on supply drops? How stupid are you? And I ask those person like, how stupid are you? I'm a YouTuber. I write this off on my taxes. It's fine for me, right? This is okay for me. It's probably not okay for the average consumer, but at the end of the day, the average consumer can do what they want with their money. It is a free market at the end of the day. So... Yeah, I mean, they're making so much money off of this, guys. And the rumor going around is that Treyarch doesn't want to do any of this, although that could be that could be false. And the Activision's forcing them to do it, essentially, because they made a lot of money off of it. And, uh, you know, I'd believe anything, really. We don't know too much about it. They're not going to discuss it, obviously. They're not going to tell us. Treyarch's not going to be like, yeah, it's Activision. They're making us. They're not. It's just not going to happen. So we have to accept it, I suppose. Deal with it. It's going to be something that's going to happen, right? It is what it is. They are going to be adding in new weapons to supply drops, and they're probably going to be doing it periodically throughout the remainder of the Black Ops 3 life cycle. It's just going to happen. So I guess we can stop being a dead horse now. I would like to not have to make another video talking about supply drops again, because this is like the fifth one. But um, yeah, a lot of people seemed upset today, so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. But this is probably going to be my last video discussing the idea of supply drops here in Black Ops 3. I mean, I'm going to do other videos talking about the weapons. Like, if I actually get some of the weapons and get some of the cool stuff out of supply drops, I'll make videos showcasing them. Sure, that sounds awesome, right? That's what people want to see. But I'm not going to make another video saying, oh, supply drops, how could they? Because, guys, it's going to happen. It's going to continue to happen. It's march it's gonna continue to happen right it's not like this is november where we can possibly change something we're halfway through black ops 3's life cycle it's gonna continue to happen and uh, whether or not that's okay with you i mean that's your own personal opinion but it's gonna continue to happen and they're gonna continue to add weapons to supply drops and we just kind of have to deal with it i suppose and i wouldn't be too surprised if i were to see that they're gonna be doing the same thing with infinity words game next year we're gonna have to see they make a lot of money off of supply drops, guys. They really do. And I don't know if there's a way we can fix it. I mean, you can always say, buy, speak with your wallet, vote with your wallet, right? And just not purchase them. But they put so little effort into this, right? They put so little effort into actually making weapons. It takes no time at all. It really does it. It takes no time at all to make a weapon skin. It's a knife skin, but it's just different, right? You basically, you just make a, a crowbar, right? And then you make it have the same damage and the same range and stuff like that as a combat knife. And then bam, you have a new DLC weapon. Or if you're looking at like the MP40 or the HG40 as it's called, it's just an SMG. You take your normal SMG profile, you change around how it looks. It takes them no time at all to make these things, guys. So even if they made a very small amount of money off of this, it would still warrant more than enough of their time to actually put this together because the art team isn't doing anything right now anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, I guess that's going to conclude the video. It does suck. I agree. It does suck. Again, I, feel, I do feel a little betrayed as a longtime fan of the Call of Duty series that they've gone down this road, but there's nothing we can do, and we're just going to have to accept it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found it at least somewhat helpful and informative. If you did, please drop me a rating, and let me know in the comments your guys' thoughts on supply drops, because once again, this is probably going to be the last video I do talking about supply drops here in Black Ops 3, because they're not going to change, and this is something we're going to have to deal with. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop me a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.